Don Parsons is a lifelong resident of Fernley. He is a former Fernley Town Board member, yep. serving two terms in office. He's currently running for Ward 2 City Councilman. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you. Uh, what made you decide to run for Ward 2 City Council seat? Uh, I went out and talked to all the different candidates that were had signed up previous to my signing up and I, I listened to their concerns and their issues and I felt like uh, somebody with uh, more in-depth knowledge of what's going on in Fernley, what needs to happen, and, uh, needed to throw their hat in the ring and uh, they're all, they were all good candidates but I felt like I could represent the community better than what uh, what they could, so I threw my hat in the ring and here we are today. Uh, what changes have you seen take place in Fernley since uh, you were a member of the Fernley Town Board? I was on the Fernley Town Board when it incorporated. And at that point in time, the city of Fernley had a clean slate and they could have developed the community into a really well-functioning uh, community with the, uh, you know, the proper staffing at City Hall and the uh, proper outlook towards the community on what was needed here to support the citizens and the residents and I think they've uh, got off track and uh, they're not paying attention to what's really going on here and what needs to be done to straighten it out. Is that with the uh, connectivity? Uh, between the uh, between subdivisions, the way they laid out the laid out the, laid out well, firmly, you, or, it, or other things in general. You have all sorts of things that are that are uh, a concern of mine. I mean, if you you drive around town here, you've got um, you got a developmental code code that was put in put in for the developers to follow, so they could develop the community in an organized way. But you have um, main roadways going to different subdivisions that weren't brought up to standards and uh, just a lot of confusion. There wasn't the same requirements on every developer uh, as they came into the community. It was uh, trying to get the information so the, de the developers could come in here in a streamlined effort and work with the uh, uh, all the entities at the city to be able to develop their projects in a timely manner, uh, get them built out, get them inspected, and get them accepted by the city. I mean, the, uh, there's uh, right now in the city, different city departments, you go down there and there's uh, confusion with the staff sometimes on what is needed to get a project accepted by the city after it has is, is been done or there's confusion on what information is needed to be able to submit the information to start the project. Um, I don't think they really look and see how the development is going to impact a certain area as far as the major roadways going into those areas. And I, I, I think the developmental community, they want to come in and they want to design and build the best product they can. They don't want to have a bunch of unhappy owners after they uh, come in and, and build a bunch of homes. They don't want to make the neighbors who they have to travel through their uh, different corridors to get to these subdivisions to be upset with them. And I, I, I think it's just a, there's a lot more um, A lot more information that could be brought out there and given to the developers before they ever really get started on their projects that is going to make it a smoother project for the city, for the developer, for the residents that already live here, and for the residents that are coming to the area. Do you think part of the problem was uh, the city council dealing with things on a case-by-case -case basis instead of an across-the-board decision? And I think I think all of the all of the issues have to be be addressed individually, but there have to be some parameters set up so that everybody knows what they have to do in order to proceed. And it seems to me like uh, instead of instead of coming up with a 
plan that's already been developed someplace else in, a, in another city in the state of Nevada or uh, our surrounding states, we decided that we needed to recreate the wheel. So we had we went in and we did our own developmental code. We did our own uh, uh, buildings and uh, <coughs> buildings and zoning codes. Uh, the requirements on the streets. I mean, all these. This stuff has been done for years and years and years, and it would have been much simpler and much more cost effective if, when city, be, when Fernley became a city, if we would have went to another sister city of our proximal size or even a little larger, got the information they had, and we utilized that information instead of trying to create all the paperwork that's necessary to operate a city. And, and, the city of Fernley grew really fast, and I think we're still playing catch up. I mean, I, I still don't think we're running at our optimum. I mean, I think there's there's um, a lot of room for improvement.